Here we have two semicircles that are graphed, and we have two definitions for two different types of semicircles. Uh, the top one is called a top semicircle, and the second one, this bottom one, is called a bottom semicircle. In some textbooks, you'll see upper semicircle or lower semicircle, or you'll see them referred to in, in other different ways. Either way, this top semicircle and bottom semicircle uh, terminology, this isn't official terminology or technical terminology. This is something that, that's, that we're just going to use in this video to help us distinguish between these two different types of semicircles. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the definitions of each of these semicircles and have a look at their graphical form. So let's start with the top semicircle. Here we've got a definition, and the definition is that y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared, so this algebraic form, this is the top half of a circle with radius r whose center is at the origin. And here to the right we have a graphical representation of this algebraic form. So sure enough we have the top half of a circle whose center is at the origin. So here, this, this is the origin right here, and we can see that each of these points uh, given by this curve, they are each r units away from the origin. So this is r units. So that's what we mean by uh, it has a radius of r. And it's only the top half, so we've, we've got no lower half of, this, of a circle here. It's just the top half. And these two blue points indicate that this point here, which is minus r and 0, and this point here, which is r and 0, these two points are included in the top semicircle. Let's have a look at the bottom semicircle down here. Well, here we've got a definition where it looks very similar to this definition, but there are, there are two key important parts that are different. First, we've got y equals negative the square root of r squared minus x squared. So this functional form is different to this functional form, and the reason it's different is that we've got a minus sign or a negative sign here. And this says that this functional form is the bottom half of a circle with a radius r whose center is at the origin. So again, the, the key word here is up the top here. We had a top, the top half of the circle. Here we've got the bottom half of a circle. And if we have a look at this, this graph, sure enough, we do have this semicircle where we have a center here at the origin. And if we were to pick any point on the circumference and join the center, whoops, and join the center and the circumference up, this would be R units. And again, we have these two points on the x-axis are included in our definition of a bottom semicircle. And we have got a radius of R and a center at the origin. So he, he, here are two definitions for a top semicircle and a bottom semicircle. If you ever come across either of these functional forms, the way to graph it is just to remember this definition and then apply it. There are other ways you could substitute values in, but I think the best way is just to remember broadly what, this, what these functional forms represent. That's the easiest way of figuring it out. So let's quickly investigate how these two functional forms relate to our circle that we've studied before. Well, you might remember that for a circle, if we have a circle here, the functional form of a circle, or the definition, definition of a circle we had was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now this represented a circle where we have a radius of r and a center at the origin. So this is similar to what we've got in each of these graphs, except it's a full circle rather than a half circle. Well, we'll notice that in each of these algebraic expressions, we have a y on the left-hand side, whereas here we don't have a y. We have an x and a y expression. So let's try and get this orange expression into the same form as these yellow expressions. And we can do that by, uh, by isolating y here. So let's subtract x squared from both sides. So we could write y squared equals r squared minus x squared. And then to, to just get a y here, let's take the square root. So if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get y, because the square root of y squared is y. And then we'll get y equals plus or minus the square root of r minus x squared. 
Now, why have we got this plus and minus here? Well, that's because if we were to square both sides, whether this was a plus square root expression or a minus square root expression, because a negative times a negative is a positive and a positive times a positive is a positive, if we were to square either of those, whether it was plus or minus here, we would get this orange expression above. So consequently, we have to write y equals plus square root r squared minus x squared or minus square root r squared minus x squared. And this is quite interesting because these, the plus r squared, r square root of r squared minus x squared, well that, that uh, is associated with this top semicircle. That's the same expression as we've got here if we just take the, the plus. And the negative is the same expression of what we've got for the bottom semicircle. In other words, the circle, as we've defined it here, is simply a different, this algebraic expression here, it's just simply a different way of saying that a circle is these two semicircles combined. In other words, this top yellow expression and this bottom yellow expression, if we were to combine them and then manipulate the algebraic terms a bit, we would end up with this initial orange algebraic form that stipulates a circle. So consequently, while they may look a bit unrelated at first, if we, if we do some algebra, we can quick, quickly see that they are very much related and that the definitions of top semicircle and body circle, bottom semicircle are, uh, are derived directly from this initial uh, idea of a circle that we established before. Okay, so that's how we define semicircles.